Hello, I'm Conrad Bain. Tonight on Different Strokes, we are presenting the concluding half of a two-part show on a very important subject, the dangers of hitchhiking. We urge families, children and parents, to watch the special episode together because some of the material presented might be disturbing to younger children. The name of the game is Ball Buster. It's a family game, fun for children. And for adults, it's exciting. You make strategic offensive and defensive moves. Then try to bust your opponent's balls. You just follow the bouncing Fritos corn chips bag. Ay, 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 ay. I am the Frito Bandido. I like Fritos corn chips. I love them, I do. I want Fritos corn chips. I'll get them from you. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, I am the Frito Bandito. Give me Fritos corn chips and I'll be your friend. The Frito Bandito, you must not offend. I was overweight and embarrassed to go any place. AIDS helped me get back into a size 12. AIDS helps control your appetite so you lose weight, yet AIDS lets you taste, chew, and enjoy. And the appetite suppressant in AIDS is not a stimulant. Why take diet pills when you can enjoy AIDS? AIDS helps you lose weight safely and effectively. Well, when Monday comes, she's Tuesday. When Tuesday comes, she's Wednesday. I do another day again. Sure, I forgot what you got, got them motherfuckers. I forgot them bitch, I lost a word to sum my word again. Italian. <laughs> it's Italian version. <laughs> A lot of people don't realize what's really going on. They view life as a bunch of unconnected incidents and things. They don't realize that there's this, like, lattice of coincidence that lays on top of everything. I'll give you an example, show you what I mean. Suppose you're thinking about a plate of shrimp. Suddenly somebody will say, like, plate or shrimp or plate of shrimp, out of the blue, no explanation. No point in looking for one either. It's all part of a cosmic unconsciousness. Well, there's a race in Iowa, second condition of congressional district. Okay. At this point, six vote difference. Now, I don't really? know where they are in the count. Six votes. So obviously there has to be a recount. The House to decide challenge in Iowa too. So you know what's going to happen. I, I know nothing about this. I nor do I. I've been avoiding a lot of the news channels. I've been watching more off the grid and building home improvement shows. You know, happy stuff. Yeah, I watched more yesterday than I've ever than I've watched probably in a year. I watched the entire coverage of the uh, Derek Chauvinistic yes. trial. Yeah. No. Why did they call this woman as a witness? Did you learn this, anything about the case from her? The second one, who uh, was wearing the T-shirt where she was from, with the the one who seemed like she was really out of it. Well, I saw two people. There was a woman and a man. A black man. The woman, I think, was Hispanic. I don't remember. Um, yesterday? She had, like, black hair. Yeah, it was yesterday. She had black was hair. Was she wearing the T-shirt with a date yeah. on it? Yes. They called her because of her video. She had taken the video from across the street, the right. convenience store where she worked. And since her video was put in as evidence and she witnessed it, but one of the first things she said, she didn't want to talk in the microphone. She's like, I don't like this. Really had nothing to add. I mean, as far as the, the video didn't show anything that we hadn't already seen, as far as I'm concerned. At least but the thing is, she counted it. from another perspective. And I think she had also called it in. You cannot put somebody's video in as evidence, I don't think, without talking to them. An affidavit that swears that she is the person who... Um, I don't know. And who knows? Who knew people. prior to this questioning what she might add? It was only after she was being questioned that you realized she wasn't going to add much. That's a fault of the lawyers then, because you know, as they, they say that a lawyer never no, asks a question that they don't know they don't know the answer to, or don't expect the answer to. So, 
weren't, weren't there like 200 dis- we're going to there? agree to disagree on that were there i mean were there other people that might have had a better i was looking for in like, this, what in her this, testimony would in add this to it case you're going to bring in i think they have 400 up to 400 witnesses this morning they had the little nine-year-old girl was talking when they went to break the little girl that had the love t-shirt i don't think i, I think i only only saw those two uh witnesses yesterday and it took me i had a, the live stream going and they would take breaks and i didn't realize they had adjourned and so i thought they were coming back from a break but they were actually replaying the entire so i, I watched like a half an hour and i was like she said this already and then i realized i'm watching the recording well the, the defense live. attorney will ask the same questions he does the first gentleman today who I was watching was the larger, the really strong man who'd been on the slide, and he was he's a security guard. He'd been a wrestler in high school and a couple of years in college. He was also yeah. an MMA fighter. That's the guy I saw yesterday. Okay, they must have continued his testimony today. Okay. The defense attorney would use the word, so you got angrier? Then he's, I wasn't angry. You cannot portray me that way. You know, which then falls into the angry black man is how he's sure. trying he sure. is trying like hades to get him to be portrayed that way and this gentleman is entirely too composed it's not going to work and it is going to backfire like crazy do you think he's going to be convicted i hope so well i think we all hope so but what do you think history doesn't lead you to believe that he will right but faith and hope and the changing tides in society today, I think this case is so strong. What I had heard is that they were going to, one expert that I had listened to said that these defense attorneys are trying to use the same defense with this situation that they used for the police officers in Rodney King, where Rodney King was a large man and he was so strong. And so, yes, they used excessive force because they needed to get him subdued i don't think beating someone to near death perhaps you've gone beyond subdued oh yeah rodney king was clearly subdued for several minutes and you watch officers walk back and forth and smack him with their batons they were pissed off they were that was revenge he led him on a high-speed police chase you know they wanted to beat the crap out of him when they got their chance and they did what i um, do not think is fair is that they are allowing some information about George Floyd's past, mm-hmm. but not that Chauvin has 19 prior complaints about him. That's inadmissible. Why would that be inadmissible? I mean, did, did the judge rule that already? Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. We wouldn't want that to influence anything, I suppose, because we're just talking about today, May 25th of 2020 just this one day this one situation and the yes when they were talking to the the gentleman this morning who had been an mma fighter and he was so in an mma fight it was chokeholds over and over and over and over and over and this whole thing and then some more over and over seriously you would have thought that he was just on a little track with repeat it was that bad Mm -hmm. did you ever you know when somebody was choking you out did you ever talk to them? Did you ever tell them, was there any exchange? And he was like, no, there wasn't any interaction between the, and he got cut off. So the prosecutor got to come back up and say, did you tap out if you were about to be choked out? Yes, in a fight, you tap out. There's nothing spoken between the fighters. And as soon as you tap, fight stops. It's over. That's correct. That's correct. And so it was just kind of like, because what the defense attorney was trying to make it sound like was George Floyd wasn't being choked out. He could still breathe. He was talking. Right. So in an MMA fight, you just go tell somebody's out. Isn't that the goal? Well, in MMA, you do that. But he kept talking then about martial arts. Isn't the goal to knock the other person out? And it's like, no, I have, I'm a blue belt in Taekwondo. And in those things, it's to stun them to a degree. And then it's called, you don't, no, no. It was just horse crud. Do we know what the, racial makeup of the jury is two who and this is with all 15 i want to say right now because they do have three who are sitting alternates right now although they had said i think after the first day they would let one go now as far as how the breakdown is between actual jurors and alternates i don't know but in the total pool 
it was, is, to who mixed race, five people of color and eight white, though that seems like too many people now, 12, because there should be 15 in total, but there's two mixed. I'm just curious. I mean, it's not necessarily a huge factor, but it could be. Oh, okay. Well, and there's somebody who has, somebody on there has a member of their family who is a police officer in Minneapolis, someone else who has a family member in law enforcement. But I think okay, that yeah, that to me that kind of thing is more important than race. I've gone through the jury process I think three times and never actually gone through a complete trial. There was a plea bargain in one of them. the The most recent I was dismissed because it was a I don't think it was a murder case, but it was you know when they're trying to if you anybody who's been in a jury pool they start weeding you out for various reasons. Yes. They say if there's anybody here who has blah blah blah, and usually. If you have somebody in your family who's a police officer, that can usually, at least in my experience, can be enough to throw you off the jury. In my case, my excuse was that my brother had been murdered about a year prior. Let's say your reason, not your excuse. My reason. They'd ask, raise your hand if you or anybody in your family has been a victim of violence recently or something like that. And yeah, my brother was murdered about two years, almost three years ago now, in cold blood, stabbed to death. It's still unsolved. This was in the small town where we grew up, which is a not a violent town at all. I think there were maybe five murders in the last twenty years or something. And it's like, how do you? How can you not solve something in a town that size? Exactly. Somebody knows something. Well, I was talking to the detective for quite a bit in, in the beginning there, as they and there's they can't tell you too much, but they can kind of give you hints. And the, the most that I ever got out of the guy was that there was a, I believe he said a person of interest, so not necessarily a suspect, but a person of interest who had fled the country. And they were, as he said, we we're waiting for him to come back. Now, oh. that seems a little, it's like, so we're just going to leave it at that then? Like, you know okay. a person's name? And okay, fine. So, I mean, they say in murder cases, the first 48 hours are really crucial. Yes. That any if you don't find the evidence in that first 48 hours, it's it. That's pretty much it. It gets exponentially more difficult as each day goes by. So, you know, forget about it. Two years later, and at the time, I mean, unfortunately, not to be cynical, but at the time, I said, I don't think they're going to solve this. I just don't because, and this isn't to throw any shade on a particular police who I'm sure are all doing their jobs, but my brother wasn't. A person who was a, let's say, an upstanding member of society. I mean, he wasn't a murderer. He wasn't a rapist. He wasn't, he was, you know, he'd been in, in and out of prison a few times. And he wasn't what one would hold up as, you know, an example of a pillar of society. But what, so what? Who cares? Still a person. He's still a person. And the fact that this was a complete, I mean, I don't know anything. I don't know any of the details because I wasn't there. And, and I don't know. I don't even have a name of somebody who was there. So, uh, but it looks like it was a dispute over something and it was mm. just a cold blooded murder. And in the story, because it made the local news, they had to put in, this just pisses me off to no end, but they had to put in, uh, just as an aside, that drug paraphernalia was found. Now, again, it's like saying the angry black. It's it's this implication. Oh, well, he's just a dirt bag then if, he's, if there's drug paraphernalia. I wasn't he was necessarily. A, he was a druggie, so he invited this because his lifestyle obviously was not above board. If he hadn't been doing these awful things, this probably would not have happened to him. That's exactly that what kind they, of thing. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I wasn't close to my brother in the years prior to his death. I mean, close as in, you know, we were a million miles away geographically, and we weren't. You know, we would talk every now and then on the phone, but I don't think he was quote unquote into drugs. There was probably a, a marijuana pipe on the table, which is let's not you know let's not forget legal in half the states and will soon be legal in all the states. It's in New York, isn't it? It is actually. It, it uh, oh, it yeah. won't be in Nebraska. They can't even get medical marijuana <laughs> put on the ballot. I imagine it'll have to be at the federal level eventually because there will be some people, some states like that. I, I don't. I don't think he wasn't a heroin guy. There weren't needles there. There weren't. He wasn't a crack guy. Not not to throw shade on those people. I'm just saying, if there was drug paraphernalia there, and I'm sure there probably was, it was a, it was probably a pipe. He and whatever, his buddy or somebody he met at a bar or something were probably playing cards and smoking a little weed and having some beers and somebody said the wrong thing and what, or maybe he tried to, I don't know. That's what makes sense to me, is that that's, 
That Somebody of showed up thinking that they had something or they had money or whatever and thinking they could get something and there yeah. wasn't anything and they went ahead and killed him. Yeah. He got out of the house. This was at a house that he and my mother had shared. My mother was actually in the hospital at the time. She'd oh. gone in because she had some, she was having trouble walking. And so she went in for observation. She was in overnight when this happened. Otherwise, I mean, you know, you can speculate until the cows come home. Would it not have happened had she been home? Would she have also been a victim had she been home? You know, who knows? I would, unfortunately, probably lean towards the latter because I'm thinking whoever perpetrated this crime wasn't a real emotional person as far as kindness is concerned. Right. But it could have been that had my mom been there, he might not have had somebody over to play sure. cards or whatever. I just don't know. I mean, it's, it's silly to speculate. It doesn't matter. He was murdered. He did not deserve to be murdered. No. And the person's still walking around out there. That's, That's... Uh, not a good thing. But uh, yeah, I'm rather cynical. Do you ever check things. in? Honestly, Every... do you call in and check and say, how's it going? Have you found anything? I don't because it was just so frustrating. I was doing that a lot in the beginning. Somewhere I probably have the detective's cell phone number. But it was just, there wasn't anything really. You had to make some yeah. form of peace with it. I don't know that I've made peace with it. I think some form of some form. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, I guess it's pushed into the back of my mind where hopefully there will be some form of resolution, uh, resolution to it. I don't know. Anyway, my point to that just was that I was thrown off the jury because of that. So, and I know the thing about juries is that the prosecutor wants juries to favor them and the defense them, et cetera. Like one of the most disgusting questions when they were showing, when they were trying to get the jury and the defense attorney, would you be proud to say you acquitted Derek Chauvin? Uh, I'm sorry, what? In my mind, the answer would have been, I would say I was proud to have, I actually had the one, and it was just one sentence. Ugh, I can't even think of it. Now, having watched some of this and they just showed it, and I can tell you why that girl was important. They actually had him in the vehicle. They had George Floyd, and then they pulled him out from the other side. Okay. And it's her video that shows him being pulled out. Okay, see, that I didn't know. That, that makes sense to me. Kneel on him. Now, that makes sense to me, because I was watching it and trying to figure out what her testimony was supposed to be adding or subtracting, and nothing, to me, nothing she was saying seemed any different from any other of the other people who were standing there, who might have even been more articulate for that matter. But whatever. Now, now I understand. That makes sense. If, if, there's, if her video has extra information on it, then... Obviously, you'd want to speak to her too. So I get it. I, I, I see. I'm not. A, I'm not a monster. When I'm wrong, I'm. I'll admit it. I'll be the second person to admit it when I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't mind. I just put in for a, an apartment that I hope is. I think it's real because it wasn't on Craigslist. It was on a like one of those apartments sites. Yeah, I'm telling you, Craigslist. Can, I won't. Well, I'll never use it. But that's just me. I've never used it for an apartment. Well, no, that's not true. I used it to list my apartment, and that worked. I did get my dream job from Craigslist. Not something I even thought would be my dream job, but it was a simple listing for general manager of an independent movie theater. Yeah. And it turned out that basically he gave me complete autonomy because he trusted what I was doing, and you know I impressed him with my game plan for the place, and I think within a month, I pleaded with him to let me do the booking and he acquiesced and so i did so from that point on i did all the booking what happened everything. with that one uh he lost his lease oh he had a 10-year lease and he and his wife it had been their dream project because they were indie filmmakers yeah. so they wanted a place on the lower east side that was filmmaker friendly and that kind of thing and he was going through a divorce when i came aboard he had been going through a divorce for a couple of years and since his wife and he were co-owners, he also owns this it's sort of a chain now called Two Boots Pizza. He started this pizzeria with his wife, and he finally got the his dream, which was, I forget what the stadium's called now, where the Mets play, City Field, I guess. So he sells his pizza at, he got the franchise, the Mets franchise. Yeah. Franchise. So that was a big deal, because he's a huge Mets fan. The owner just wanted to raise the rent, and it was a lost leader for him anyway. But it was, you know, he dug it because it was cool. He made so much money on the pizzerias that he could have this little vanity project as a loss leader until the divorce went through. And then he basically had to cut 
like all of his losses. Yeah. Yeah. So he cut that. But we scrambled around trying to set up a nonprofit status for it, trying to get people interested in buying it. We even tried, Phil is friends with Steve Buscemi. He tried to get Tarantino to buy it. And unfortunately, Tarantino was unreachable because he was in Yugoslavia shooting Inglorious Bastards. And he literally was unreachable. Couldn't. Nazis. For like two weeks, couldn't, couldn't reach him. So. Quentin didn't. And then Quentin ended up buying a theater in Los Angeles, which is where he shows his movies now. Anyway, Phil even offered to give me the theater. He said, I will give you the theater outright if you can make the rent. And the rent was 25 grand a month, oh. which is mathematically impossible to make back. That's why he was kind of floating it with the pizzerias, which do fantastic Well, if things. you could sell the pizza in there and cocktails and a bunch of other stuff, you could make it through food. The pizzeria was right next door. But the pizzeria is making the money, not the theater. It's just not a viable thing anymore, a single screen theater. I mean, that's why all the regular theaters, you know, cut their theaters up into like four small screens. So we have the Joyo is still up north. Uh-huh. Uh, and then where you get the really cool independent films in Lincoln is Mary Rick Moras, which is down on the university campus. And that's the international, you can get foreign language, you can get the even, dare I say, boutique films sometimes. Huh. Is there any yeah. sort of a revival house? Is there? Do they show like, because I remember years and years ago, early, early 80s, when I was still in Nebraska, I remember taking some road trips to Lincoln to watch like Marx Brothers movies or Fred and Ginger or whatever. Uh, not to my knowledge. Okay. That wouldn't fly anywhere, especially considering they're all over TV. That's the thing, because early 80s, the dawn of the video era. You didn't have access to everything at your fingertips. So, yeah, that's probably true. It I'll was. On, on campus, they probably do stuff like that. No. Just for, like for film students, at least. Is there a film program there? Yes. Okay. Yes. With the Johnny Carson Theater and the best English teacher I ever had. And this is one name I will mention. Unfortunately, she has passed. Her name was June Levine. Okay. She got the whole program started at the university. She would come in just long dark, it was graying, wavy hair, and wear moo-moos. I don't think you were supposed to smoke in the classrooms. She smoked non- non-filtered camels end to end, mm-hmm. pretty much. It would just put them out in the trash can. But this woman could get you to write. Uh, there was just something about her that made you want to write for her. I think if every student could have a June Levine, they would enjoy English much more than they do. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people who do not like writing and i had come from having the year before the head of the english department who was a little german fellow who sat with his hands under his legs and looked at his desk all the time and had still had quite a thick accent so it was hard to understand him sometimes and he was just mean to everybody no matter what you wrote to everyone was everything was a cliche nothing was original well you're talking to 18 year old students how about give them a little guidance i'm not saying give them ideas on what to write about but give them direction as to what is it that you're looking for what is what makes the story original to you because this was original a lot of it to an 18 year old you were a lot older he had read it from someone else through all of the years but how's a student supposed to know that say okay so a personal story put a new twist on it i don't want to hear just what happened tell me what was going on around it describe what was happening around it make it bigger make it more and he would photocopy. He would pick two students' papers in each class after we turned them in. He would cover up the name, and then he would hand them out and have everybody read them. And the whole goal of it was to chop it to pieces. Okay. Embarrass the writer. And one of my friends who I had met at college, her writing, I knew her writing, and I could always tell when her paper got handed out that she just dropped her head. And I wasn't going to play that game. I wasn't going to sit and try and make everybody feel miserable about what they'd written. That doesn't inspire anyone to do anything except not show up. Yeah. It's really a a crime, I think, when teachers don't inspire a passion. I mean, I I understand it's you can't do that with everybody. But when I compare my public school education to my kids' public school education, I see such an amazing difference. And I don't think it's just from state to state or even from decade to decade. But it's both of my kids had math teachers different teachers, different schools, different teachers, but individually they had two math teachers who were so inspiring. I'm one of those, oh, I hate math. I can't do math. Uh, you know, math sucks type of people. If I had either of those teachers teaching me math, it would have been a different story. They're yes. just, it's about how you teach, not 
what you teach. You know, I, I told this guy during a parent teacher conference, I said, I, I'm just amazed at how I'm watching you and the students and I'm just amazed at how you inspire them with math, which is something that most people I think find really boring. I like and, math. <laughs> uh, well, but I mean, yes. most people yes. at least they do. And I think it's not, not because it is boring, but because of the way it was taught. It isn't boring. Nothing's boring if, if you understand it. But it's a really tough nut to crack if you don't. My first stats teacher had said, or was it the second year? No, first year. Second, eh, doesn't matter. But he had said he figured out through all of his time in school and through grad school that with statistics, it was better to coach it than to teach it. And he didn't say that in his first day that kind of came around. I tell you what, you showed up his class. And again, it was math. I enjoyed math. And I was very tired before one of the tests. Now I'm not supposed to have caffeine. Okay. I drank an entire pot of coffee, so I couldn't study. And I, you know, my thought was, okay, caffeine, I'll stay awake. I can study. I walked in the door and I looked at him and I said, I, and he could tell I was off center. And I said, I, I could even study. I don't think I can do anything. I'm like, I'm just going to write my name on it and turn it in. It's like, just sit down. Give it a try. See what happens. And I walked out with a B plus. And that was because of the way that he had approached the subject. That obviously without my even realizing it, I had learned that much. He was very good. Very good teacher. And last I knew, he's still there. He's got his photo on the wall. He was good. Yeah. And I think just the idea of critical thinking isn't something that's taught as part of the curriculum. Well, People... it's test, 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 test. Right. And people don't know teach how to, to think. Teach. It's not no. the kid's fault at all. No. You know, I watch a lot of yuck TV, so you don't have to. <laughs> I was watching, and this was actually just a clip. I didn't even have to watch the whole show from one of the Real Housewives. Okay. And so, of course, we know that they are all incredibly wealthy and on and on. And this one gal came from a very wealthy family, married a man who is well-to-do. And she's somewhere in her 30s, probably early 30s. But in this clip, I heard her say she had never seen a bill. <laughs> never seen a bill. But okay. Just never physically even set eyes on a bill, hmm. let alone obviously never have to worry about writing the check or, well, the money didn't necessarily matter that much to them anyway. But could you imagine? If I would like to imagine that. Yeah, I would. Money can't buy happiness is a crop because what money can buy is everything that stands in your way to happiness. Who um, outside outside of pers interpersonal relationships, that's on you. But yes, having a bed to sleep in, not having to worry about a marshal kicking you out in the middle of the night, that those things go a long way toward happiness, in my opinion. Well, Denzel Washington said something, and now the first part is not related. He said how people say money can't buy you happiness. He started laughing and goes, yeah, but it's a hell of a down payment. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. You know, it's people with money who tell you that. You know, the ruling class doesn't want you to think that money can buy you happiness. Really? Yeah. Then why don't you give me yours? Exactly. Mr. Elon Musk, really? You know, he acknowledged it. He was kind of like, yep, 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 yep. Yes, it can. Ah, what about Georgia? Travesty. Right? Inconceivable. Or is it? The fact that they signed it behind closed doors with six of his good old white buddies behind him under a picture of a plantation. Of course. And, and the one woman who is an elected official who probably had every right to be in that room knocked on the door. All she did was knock on the door and say she wanted to be in there and is automatically arrested with a felony. Yeah. And then Kemp gets on and lies about how she was kicking and stepping on, stomping on the officers, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Dude, it's on video. No, she didn't. Uh, and now, now there's pressure on the masters. The Yes, and I hope they leave. <sighs> They're called the masters, and they play on a plantation. And they didn't let blacks in until the government literally made them let blacks yes. in in the 90s. Do we really think they're going to have sympathy for this? Let's see now. Sometimes that word, there's such a fear of that word, we're not supposed to say master bedroom anymore. Uh -huh. It's the primary bedroom. I have a master certification. So do I have to change that? I mean, there there are certain times that that word is, is wrong and you need to be careful. But you can't cancel the word. It's context. They are master's level golfers. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I understand. So, I, I'm, I'm making a joke about that. But, you know, you can call me boy. No problem. You can't call a black man a boy. 
because it's the context. It isn't the word. Nothing wrong with the word boy. Yeah, I accidentally did that once. <laughs> well, I mean, I would, accidents I would, are fine, aren't they? I mean, that's how we learn. No, no, I could tease my son's friends. When we were joking around, and I could say, you guys are such good boys. And when they were doing something really sweet and fun. But I have a great relationship with all these guys. I mean, we go, they want to go have frozen yogurt with me. And they always say hi and ask how I'm doing and all kinds of stuff. But these were also middle school students. So in my age, they're still girls and boys. Mm -hmm. And I made the comment in, it was age related. And I found out later on another teacher who I had played softball with would come in and check throughout the day that he's, the student is a problem student. And so they said he will pick and pick and pick and try and find anything to aggravate a teacher and worse with substitutes. So then I was like, okay, I still felt bad. I never meant to offend anyone by any means. Oh, Lordy. People need to chill out and try to listen for the context. Oh, we do have a little bit of political drama here in the state which is we have a senator from the west who imagine this i have never thought really was the one who sued the neighbors who they had some neighbors who let them use some land out west for grazing and to pass through and to use their water source let the Mm -hmm. kids go play in the water and on and on then one day this gal decided that the land should just be hers should be theirs so sued the other people for the rights to the land sued them which they lost the battle in the end, but cost this this really kind couple, I want to say, about 60 grand. Whoa. She's done some other things. She's just incredibly self-promoting. I think she would turn with the tide if, of course, she became a sheeple to the previous administration. But I honestly think if whoever else comes up in the ranks, she would agree with them just to be there. But she recently bought a house, she and her husband, in the capital city here. And as soon as that happened, I said, she's going to turn around and run for governor. And then about a week ago in the paper, top headline front page of she's considering a run for governor. Now, if she wins, the current governor would get to appoint someone to take her place for the last two years of her Senate run experience term. There we go. God, that's a big one. Twain. So now, somehow what the peeps are thinking is she'll run, and the Democrats don't have, we don't even have a candidate, a good, strong candidate running at this point. And this is the state, so heaven forbid she should win. And then he'll turn around, they'll figure out a way just to put him in the Senate seat, and then he'll try and run again. And his family has a bunch of money, so his daddy just buys everything. They buy state senators, seats for them. They they buy all kinds of stuff. It isn't supposed to be for sale. When is this all going to go down? A couple of years. Next year. Okay. 2022. The only name I know is, is Ben Sassy. Is he involved Hold in on. this? Nine are women, five are men, eight identify as white, four identify as black, two <laughs> okay. identify as multiracial mixed race. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's... Ding, 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 ding. So eight identify as black for identify or eight as white. But Isn't there really are more the reason women. to not just say R and not identify? I mean I, I understand trying to bend over backwards to make certain people happy, but well, I don't, there's really no could, reason to say it in this context. It could be that there is something in their lineage that they are unaware of. Or the majority of say if you are seventy five, twenty five, but you don't want to identify as mixed, you identify as white or you identify as black. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either, Mary. I wish I did. No, I wish you knew. I wish you knew so that I could just ask you. The burden of knowing. And I'm kind of, do what you do. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. On the Depends crown, you. just so you know. Okay. Crown update. They switched the actors and actresses because you can't have the same. I don't think they could have aged her properly. So they just switched. All of a sudden, it's the end, and then the next one comes on, and you have 10, 15, 20 years added to her. I don't know. I haven't been able to identify it by the, the kids. Hmm. I think that's how we'll be able to tell as soon as I see the kids, how old Charles is. So it took me a minute or 10 to get used to it. But then the actress, incredibly, incredibly talented actress who I adore her work, 
they brought in for Margaret, but they just don't look alike at all. You know, it can't be one of those age progression things that you buy. So I'm I'm buying into her just because I like her so much. It took me a bit. But Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, yes. Yes. How can you not like her? And if somebody can't, I don't want to hear it. It isn't that I don't like her. I like her fine. I got annoyed because of Tim Burton putting her in every single movie. Just like I'm annoyed that he puts Johnny Depp in every single movie. Because it's like, oh, another Tim Burton movie. Guess whose wife is going to be in it. But she's good. She's good. She's fine. Yeah. But it's like Rob Zombie. Oh, Rob Zombie just announced he's going to do a Munsters movie. My only reaction was, gee, I wonder whose wife is going to play Lily. Whose? His. <laughs> Rob's. What? She's in every movie. Every one of his movies. No way. Yeah. So, You're making that up. Rob is one of these guys that I want to like. I sincerely want to like Rob Zombie because everything I know about him is he's a great guy. I have friends who know him who say he's a great guy. He's His heart is in the right place, but he just makes crappy movies. I'm sorry. It's Kevin Smith, same thing. I want to like him. I hear he's a great guy. Are they crappy, crappy, or do you just not enjoy them? The problem with Rob Zombie movies is that he's a big horror fan, and he's a big horror fan of specifically... Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I am as well. Huge fan. So all of his movies are basically made, they're like high school kids making, oh, let's go make a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And basically just steals the scenes, steals shots, steals ideas. And, but there's nothing original, nothing original. about it. Yeah, it's just, I'm going to make my own version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Isn't this cool? Aren't serial killers cool? 6.0, 7.0. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, again, I like him as a person. I, I'm yes. sure I would have a great dinner party with him. Kevin Smith, too. But I just, I don't like, Kevin Smith's scripts are way too talky. They never, ever too resonate with me. dialogue heavy? Not even just dialogue heavy, but more like too many syllables in a sentence. If that makes any sense. Oh, like, like Dawson's Creek. too many Creek. words. Okay, could be. I, bet I never watched it. I bet, it. I bet you're right. I bet it's exactly the same type. Chasing Amy is what I'm thinking of. And it's, people use 15 words when they could use three. I hate Every that. single time. It's kind of like write a 10-page paper when you could write it much better in six. Yeah. So you just throw in words to fill space. Exactly. <laughs> oh, what? I get lost. Well, I don't get lost. I They lose me and not because I can't follow, but because my interest level has depleted beyond recognition, beyond anything, beyond existence. Yeah. Art should breathe. Conversation should breathe. It shouldn't be... Breathe. Yeah. It should, breathe. It should be able to... Not know where it's going as you're watching or listening, but it's just, it, it seems like I'm reading a script on paper. So, yeah, Did I whatever. Tell you about our cute little bunners that live in our backyard? I don't think so. Little Peter we Rabbit. We have a, little bunners, and they live behind the shed. I have a couple pallets back there that I'm going to make some things with. Neither of the dogs will chase them anymore, and they'll sit. And it used to be when I would open the door, they would hop away, and now they stay. And they'll even look at me sometimes. And we just have little bunner conversations. Oh. So I will bring all the fruit and vegetables out there. I brought a whole, like over half a bag of carrot chips. Whoa. Gone. Boom. Within two to three days. And I apologized in case it was too cliche. (laughs) I really did. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So I'm sure the neighbors. It's like, yep, Mary's talking to the bunners again. And that's what she does. I don't think you have to. No offense. I don't know. But, you know, it just is like they've had raspberries and mixed greens and apple. Is one of them named Flopsy and one of them Mopsy? No, no, they don't have floppy ears. Oh. They're so cute. What were the other names of of Peter Rabbit? Cottontail. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. And Gummo. Everybody always forgets Gummo. There's a new, uh, there's a sequel. Did you know there was a Peter Rabbit kids movie a couple of years ago, maybe? Yes. And now there's a Peter Rabbit 2. Oh. Yeah. So many unanswered questions in the first one. I can only imagine. That's the one I remember there was a controversy about this. Do you remember the, every movie has to have a controversy, right? Huh. <laughs> the controversy for Peter Rabbit, the movie, was that there's a scene where I think one of the rabbits... One of the CGI rabbits eats some blueberries and apparently is allergic to blueberries. And so oh. the face blows up to comical proportions. Well, you know what, Mary? Tragically, millions of Americans suffer from allergies. And this is no laughing matter. Yeah, I swear. The no. National 
blueberry allergy. <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh, no, I'm, I wish I was. They actually pressured them. I mean, nothing happened. They were like, this is no laughing matter. Once again, why we can't have nice things. Wow. Yeah. So I hope that they learned their lesson and there's no you know, blueberry scene in this one. Or I am no. taken to the streets. That's right. Maybe it'll be blackberries this time or raspberries. Oh, even worse. Or strawberries. Ooh. Or grapes. Well, they have, they're yeah. raspberries, but they identify as blackberries. Oh. No, it's just getting complicated. Check, please. Can I get out of this, please? Okay, here's how stupid I am. As an American. We say those things about ourselves. <laughs> I'm saying it about myself. I'm not, I'm not accusing yeah. you or anyone else of being stupid. Just myself. Okay. But until this week, I'd never heard of Myanmar. Seriously? And, yeah. Wow. Was, unlike most Americans, I didn't just say, eh, that's okay. And I looked it up to see, like, where is this? Is it in the Middle East? Is it in Africa? I have no idea. No idea. Is this story getting a lot of attention? Because I'm I'm reading about it, but I'm not... I guess there was a, an overthrow of the government. Some, and, but I think with everything else going on, it gets 10% of the attention. Mm -hmm. Police are literally just slaughtering people in the streets. Children, even. Ugh. Police are literally slaughtering civilians who are protesting. Yay! Ugh. Yeah. It's devastating, horrifying, heinous, and who... Who in that area? Is there anyone in that area who can step right in to do something? China. Okay, never mind. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, it's it's bleak. I mean, it, from what I understand, the rumor is Russia is, is arming the uh, police. And we know how they are about human rights. <laughs> They've got Champions. some issues. They've got Champions. Some issues. <laughs> yeah. Oy speaking of human rights, or what, what were we speaking about? Whatever. Whatever. Insert your own segue here. I just watched a documentary on, yes, you guessed it, Frank Stallone. Darn it, I was just about to say. Were you? I'm sorry. I'll, well, what I'll, else was well, there? Well, Isn't that what everyone would say? <laughs> I, well, no, I should have said I watched the Frank Stallone documentary. Because the it's, it's the definitive one. I mean, really, it's go. the last word on Frank Stallone. It's uh, Frank Stallone, for anybody who doesn't know, is the brother of Sylvester Stallone, who, of course, was Rocky and Rambo and whatnot. And, and Frank, over the years, was sort of thrown a bone by his brother. Like, he's he's in Rocky. He's the uh, There's one scene where Rocky is walking home at night, and he walks by some, uh, like, a doo-wop band singing over a bonfire. And that's him. That's Frank. So, and then Frank wrote all the music for the incredibly must be seen to be believed and even then probably not staying alive which is the sequel to saturday night fever have you ever seen that i did it's oh my it's saturday night fever only with aerobics yes. and it's directed by sylvester salone john travolta is now an aerobics guy instead of a disco guy or whatever and the music is all done by frank stallone and it's it's exactly what you would expect from mid 80s that kind of uh, breakfast club sound. No, that kind of, what am I thinking? St. Elmo's Fire kind of sounding. That kind don't of music. Be bring, don't be bringing St. Elmo's Fire into <laughs> anything if you know. The, the, <laughs> I'm that just song the still makes me speed when I'm driving. Okay. Well, then you would probably love Frank Stallone's hit album. Pick a, grab his greatest hits, just for a starter. If I. I yeah, of course I will. Now, <laughs> the English actress that's in that movie, Finola Hughes. Oh, yes. Has been on General Hospital for years. Really? Her character's name is Anna Devane. She was a member of the WSB, which is an international spy organization. Ooh. Yes. Is she still on the, the soap? Yes, she is. I turned into. I hadn't watched it in ages and turned the channel one day. Holy buckets! There it is. Well, there she is. Hello, Anna. And she has a twin oh. sister who's evil who shows up every now and then. <laughs> Played by? And by Vanola Hughes. <gasps> with a it's mustache. a thing. They... No. You know, then it gets complicated with there was a child, but who actually had the child? Now, here's this thing. I can get if a man sires a child, we'll say, and he might be unaware, right? Okay. How does a woman give birth and not know? Now, there are these young people who will say I just went to the bathroom and I gave birth. I didn't even know I was pregnant. <laughs> yep, I've heard that. Now, having given birth, there's a difference 
and just the way you feel. I worked with a woman who, because of her body shape, you couldn't tell she was pregnant, but she knew she was pregnant. Never having been there myself, obviously never never going to, but from understand secondhand, I would agree with you. I can't imagine not knowing that. There's no. a light. And they kick. The babies kick, don't they? They do. They always and they kick. roll around and they have a tendency to put their little elbows or their yeah. little heels yeah. up in your rib cage and push around a lot. That's fun. Right. Unless you're you know And the best part is when you're moving, they're still. It's when you want to go to sleep. That they're like, hey, yeah. It's playtime. Let's swim around a little bit. <laughs> Mommy, look what I can do. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Do I need to push harder? Oh, we're good. Whatever that is, pressing against my rib cage. Can you move it? Just a skosh. Love you. I, I do have a quick Frank Stallone story, though. I used to go to these conventions, horror and autograph convention type of things, and went to the last one a few years ago, and it was in New Jersey, Persephone, New Jersey, and it was like an autograph show. It wasn't just horror people. It was Uh-oh, people on television. Oh, autographs again. <laughs> no. I wasn't there for the autographs. I don't even know what I was there for. But I'm not putting myself through that autograph crap anymore. Well, I'm not no, doing it, that to myself. This this is a, it, it's like a, it's like a petting zoo, really. They have an, an area where all these quote unquote celebrities, and you can use it as them. wide a definition of that as you want, sit at their tables and they sell photos of themselves and, make small talk with you for $25 or whatever. And Frank Stallone was one of the guests. Anyway, long story short is end of the weekend, whatever. I end up in the hotel bar, sitting at the bar next to Frank Stallone. Nice guy, funny guy. I'm not like, I didn't, needless to say, I did not go to his table and get an autograph from him. I'm not that much of a Frank Stallone fan, but it was cool to have drinks with him. He was a nice guy and pretty funny and everything. And, and I uh, you guys were sitting next to each other. You just ended up at bar stools next to each other. Correct. Correct. We ended up in the hotel bar where the, convention was held we're sitting there we're having some drinks and goofing around and whatnot and we start talking about Stephen baldwin who also was a guest there and oh. we mentioned Stephen on our last episode so well Stephen was also a guest at the convention and i don't know if frank was sitting next to him or whatever but frank hated him <laughs> and and so we were riffing on the idea because as I said on the last episode, uh, Stephen Baldwin became hugely sanctimonious over being a born-again Christian. And so everything is about that now. So I don't know if that's what rubbed Frank the wrong way or what not, but uh, for whatever reason, he, just, he just hated that. And so we were riffing on – someone suggested that one of us go over to Stephen's table where he's signing autographs and throw salt in his eyes. I guess that's a, a, a biblical thing. It's to tell if – right? Is Am I – that's bad. If you throw salt in somebody's eyes and they're really the devil, then the devil will materialize or something. I don't know what it is. It seemed funny at the time. And so mm. we're kind of riffing on that. And, you know, eventually 20 bucks was on the table for doing it. And I said, look, I will do it for 20 bucks, but I will go over to Stephen Baldwin's table, throw salt in his eyes for $20 plus bail money. <laughs> and that was the deal breaker. It's like, no. No. <laughs> no. It would be funny, but nah. So needless to say, that day, Stephen Baldwin did not get salt in his eyes, but he has no idea how close he was. None. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. And Frank got into a little bit of trouble around the new over the Newtown shoot. The Newtown shootings? I forget one of one of those many school shootings oh. where he yeah he mouthed off on Twitter about David Hogg. Just oh, like some, that, I, was, I, no, that was Florida. Okay, yeah. Silly me, I can't keep my school shootings straight. And he was like, oh, this kid needs to get his ass kicked or something like that. He got, wow. He got, like, he got quite a bit of heat from that. I you know, hope he, so. I hope he did. Yeah. Anyway, that's my Frank Stallone story. I don't have one. No? No, I don't. You can use mine. I can still hold out hope. Yeah, you just just use mine in the meantime. Say it's yours. Is anybody going to call you on that? I don't know. Yeah. Really, frankly, any story that begins with, so I'm sitting at a bar with Frank Stallone. Is anybody going to question that? You know? Well, of course, most I'm sitting people... at a bar with Stallone. would be like really Mary when were you able to leave town you're like yeah good point you got me there there is that you know what I saw that I enjoyed more than I should have what pray tell might that be this new Godzilla versus King Kong you saw the movie yeah how is it I expected not too much from it because I don't like the the other two American Godzilla movies are crap I think and the King Kong Kong on Skull Island was pretty good but I'm not a fan of CGI I'm I'm old school. It just doesn't yeah. look, it doesn't look like any of this stuff's happening. It just looks like a video game. It's like 
if you're watching uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and you watch Indiana Jones being pulled underneath a Jeep, right? Okay, we know it's not really Harrison Ford, it's stuntman, but we know that somebody's doing that. Somebody actually had to do that. Yeah. In CGI movies, it's just somebody painted that in a computer. None of that has actually happened. So it's hard for me to really get into it. But the monster scenes are pretty cool. I just kept thinking, I wish I was at a drive-in. This would have been perfect drive-in oh. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Are there drive-ins near you? No. Hmm. I think they were going to try and bring one of them back to life. They put, there was one just right off O Street for many years into into our 20s that I had gone to quite a few times. And then I don't know when it closed, but people were talking in all these different areas with what was going on, that drive-ins had a chance to come back because people would be able to go sit at a drive-in with their people. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if anything ever transpired. It would be fantastic if they did. They have them there? There are some. There aren't really any, any around the city, but there are some in New York, like upstate. Pennsylvania has a bunch. There's probably, I'd have to look up the number, but there's more than you'd think still around. Texas is big. They've got a lot of, they still have like a drive-in culture. But well, they can use theirs through more of the year. That's the thing. That's that's a lot of it is how long they can. Although this last year, things were so good that they were staying open like in November. Was the weather nice through enough? November. When it was, when it was, you know. But the thing is, you're in your car, so it doesn't have to be that nice. You know? Well, do you remember? It used to be you always had to hook the speaker on right. the window. Now it's, but now, it's now through the radio. the radio. Yeah. Well, we grew up in the exact right moment to have the complete spectrum of drive-in theaters like we had at least i remember being taken there as a baby right with your parents being a kid and actually watching the movies and then uh, dating and going to the drive-in right never did that never did that okay and of then not. you know drinking some beer smoking some weed that kind of stuff and then later okay, you know who you're having... talking to right <laughs> and you think i went to the drive-in and drank beer and smoked weed well, no, but, you know, probably thought no. about it, didn't you? No. 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 Okay. All right. Well, some kids did. Those, the bad kids, the kids who failed all their classes were doing that. But then I had my own having a child and taking my children to the drive-in. So complete, you know, people who grew up in the 70s wouldn't have gotten... Oh, wait, that's not true. I guess they would have... I guess anything. Never mind. Your attention, please. If you're leaving the theater, please hang your speaker on the speaker stand before starting your car. Don't take chances on accidents which may damage your car. If you accidentally tear off your speaker, please don't be frightened. Simply turn it in. There is no charge for reinstalling speakers.